But it's madness, Roger. Why would I do that? Why would anyone do that? It's... Hello, my friends. Hello. And welcome once again to stately Vaughn Manor, where it's the Robert E. Howard Show. It's up really late because I didn't have time to do any videos this morning. I did one in the afternoon, but it wasn't this one. But I had to put this up because we're talking about today for the Robert E. Howard Show, Sumerian September once again. Sumerian September. In September, we're going to be reading Robert E. Howard's Conan. Conan. The whole thing. Every single bit of Robert E. Howard's Conan we're going to be reading in September. I'm really looking forward to it. I love Conan. Robert E. Howard's my favorite writer, of course. And I haven't read Conan for years. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And on the first day of September, I'm going to be starting this book. Or the Del Rey set, one or the other. You can get them either way in the beautiful three-volume Del Rey edition of Conan, or this, The Complete Chronicles of Conan. You can read it either way. And that's what I'm going to be doing. The original Conan by Robert E. Howard. The original stories. So that's what's going on in Sumerian September. But... So, for the longest time, for years, Robert E. Howard's Conan was only available in a series of paperback books edited, edited by L. Sprague de Camp and including, mixed up with Robert E. Howard's great original Conan stories, a bunch of pastiche fiction by L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. And so for years, the only way you can get them was in that way. Uh, this was the first volume of that paperback set. This was published by Lancer. Later, later it was published by Ace, uh, based on some hardbacks that were published, was it the 50s or the 60s, when Gnome Press published those books? I don't remember. But for years, the only way you could read Robert E. Howard's Conan was in a set of books, this set of books, where Robert E. Howard's fiction was mixed up with pastiche fiction, which is ridiculous. And I thought so at the time, and I still think so. Because, you know, you wouldn't go to anybody's original series of books. You wouldn't go to Tolkien, Tolkien with The Lord of the Rings and just mix up a bunch of your own fiction and stick it in there in odd places, you know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. I mean, unless you're, you know, Amazon or something. But really... Normally, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that with Sherlock Holmes, with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's original stories. You wouldn't stick your own pastiche stories in there. But with Conan, that's what Al Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter did. And they also took stories that were not Conan stories and were originally published or unpublished by Robert E. Howard. And, and these non-Conan stories were turned into Conan stories by Al Sprague de Camp. So some weird stuff was going on with this set of books, which was originally 12 books, but then Els Bradley Camp put out some more, but it was originally a set of 12 books. Starting with this one, Conan, with this magnificent Frazetta cover. cover. And what, one of the things about this set, I've got a few of them here. I have most of these packed away and I've got to unpack them. But uh, I've got a couple different sets of these. Like, they have these great Frazetta covers. This is the second volume, Conan of Samaria. And actually, they have some good Boris covers, too. This is a Boris Vallejo cover for Conan the Wanderer. And um, actually, that's, that's book four. But in book three, I for, this was the original cover for Conan the Freebooter. I don't remember who this artist was. But wisely, wisely, uh, the artwork was replaced by Boris Vallejo art. And this is fantastic. That is a fantastic cover, I have to say. So the covers for this series were great. Probably this is my favorite um, for the fifth book, Conan the Adventurer. Anyway, what I was getting to with this series, aside from its magnificent covers, was it was a series where Robert E. Howard's Conan fiction was all mixed up 
with these other stories by, you know, I'll spread to camp and Lynn Carter. Also, what this series does is it presents Conan's adventures in, chrono in the chronological order of Conan's life, which is not how it was written or intended by Robert E. Howard. So if you read this, this particular volume publishes the Conan stories in the order that they were originally published. The Del Rey set uh, publish them, publishes them in the order that they were composed, in the order that they were written. But this set published them in the order of the chronology of Conan's life. And so there's that. And I don't, I'm not going to complain about that too much. To me, my real problem with this set of books was that there's no reason in my mind that L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter had to mix in their own fiction with Robert E. Howard's original fiction. I think what they should have done is publish, say, six volumes instead of 12 of Robert E. Howard's original Conan fiction. And then if they wanted to do pastiche fiction, fine. They can continue the series, but don't mix it up. I mean, that just seems disrespectful, frankly, but that's how it was done. And so for Sumerian September, we're going to go with the original Conan series as written by Robert E. Howard. You know, the original stuff, not that new paperback set, but I've been having these I, recently, I had an email exchange with someone who will remain nameless because she was just so wrong. Basically, uh, she was this friend of mine in this email exchange was defending this series of books. And she's not the only one I've heard defend this series of books. And yes, this series of books did make Conan popular and did keep Robert E. Howard alive as an author. So it did have its, its advantages. My personal feeling is you didn't need to mix up the stories for that to happen. You could have published Robert E. Howard's original stories and they would have been just as popular, if not more so, than this series was. But, you know, this series has its defenders, including this nameless person who I had this email exchange with. Basically, she said that she really likes this set of books and remembers it fondly. And if she's going to go back and read Conan in September, she's going to read it in this horrid way. And I was like, no, no, man, you can't do that. You have to, you have, but of course I can't tell people what to do. People, you know, they've got like freedom or something. And so she could just do that, I guess. And I can't, it's like, I can't stop her. So she's going to read this. And one point she made, she asked me, when was the last time you read these? And I said, well, it was probably 1993 or 1994, the last, it's, I mean, so the 20th century, I read this in the 20th century. And she says, well, you know, how can you make an informed critique of this set of books, the quality of the stories? You know, you're just going on these ancient memories, ancient memories. You're going on these ancient memories of yours from the 20th century. How can you, how can you properly judge this set of books and make this kind of critique and say, you know, this sucks. Which is a fair point. I, I, I still think I'm right. I don't believe you should mix up pastiche stories with original stories by an author who created a character. I think that's just wrong. But as to the quality of the work itself and how it hangs together as a series and whether it works at all, works at all as the 12 book series, chronicling Conan's adventures chronologically. Yeah, there's a point. It's been a long time since I read this stuff. So this is the insane thing I'm going to do, and I'm not recommending anybody else do this. But this is the insane thing I'm going to do. Because, you know, she had a point. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. 
This is how I'm starting the month of September. Then I'm going to read right afterwards all 12 books of this original set. So all September is going to be taken up with these books. Can I read all of this in one month? You know it's possible because half the month I'm on vacation. Um, so it's possible. It's highly unlikely because I, on vacations I tend to do things, you know. I go places and I do things. It's a stupid thing to do on a vacation. But I do. So it's unlikely I'll actually finish this. I'll probably finish this set in October. But that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be reading this for Sumerian September. And then... I'm going to be reading this set so I can properly critique it. And as I reach each, each book, I will let you know on the Robert E. Howard Show what I think of the particular book, all 12 of them as I read them. And I will, you know, give my critique of this set of books, my modern critique, not just my ancient memory, ancient memories from 1994 or whenever the hell it was I read this the last time. So there you go. Officially, though, this is what we're reading in Sumerian September. I'm just adding this stuff, you know. Unless you're a rebel and go against my will and, you know, just decide to read this set anyway, despite what I might think, which is crazy. Anyway, that's all I have to say for today. I guess I'll shut up now and upload this video hella late. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.